children of athletes uh, have a, a lot of added pressure on them to excel in sports. Everybody expects that they're going to excel in uh, in in athletics. Was that pressure on on both of you as well? I mean, definitely. We grew up playing baseball. We are only living a month apart, so imagine. Uh, I was lucky enough to wear number twelve, so uh, I was happy not to have that pressure to have that twenty-one there, only because you know, like you're saying, the expectations. I remember we both signed professionally. I signed with the Pirates. Roberto Junior you know, the previous year signed with the Phillies, and we were compared to each other and then individually to that. So we, we had double the pressure, but it, it came to a point where I realized that by not playing, I was going to be able to probably dedicate more time towards the legacy. I don't feel that nobody's obligated. People tend to think that's your obligation to continue. No, we have choices. Everyone has choices. And I feel that um, the fact that our mother raised us the way she did, uh, it made it easy for us to make the right choice. And I feel that um, a lot of the times, you know, everyone always asks, oh, so do you guys play ball? Do you guys ever played or whatever? We did play at the professional level, but because we're not, we didn't continue that and that became our career. Now we've been able to impact so many others uh, worldwide. Can you remember anything in particular that your father ever told you? I mean, just, he was a leader. Um, by his actions. Um, I, I remember so many times that he stopped and talked to people or, or stopped at a, a field where kids were playing and he just was pulling into the, into the field or the, the lot and get out of the car and play catch with the kids and give him advice. And um, that was, that's what he was. For us, I think that uh, being able to show so many of his layers of human, you know, of being a human being, but the impact that he had um to everyone that he touched and the people that never even met him somehow they felt the, that connection because of that story that human interest story right and uh i truly believe that you know 51 years after his disappearance we're we're still talking about a guy that a person that lived only 38 on on earth um which is very impactful so we 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 know that this this project right now is going to be a, a cornerstone for the new generation of, of kids that are learning about him in third and seventh grade in schools and the books. And, and that's going to really uh, open a uh, line of conversation for the parents to know the story and how they feel, how, how they connected to him and their kids today. Is that how you, you look at this, uh, this project, uh, David, is introducing Roberto to people who don't know who he was? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, before I started this project, I knew only the the most basic of facts about him. I grew up in uh, about an hour outside of Pittsburgh in a little town called Indiana, Pennsylvania. Um, and when I sort of uh, started learning more about Roberto and how just incredibly kind and magnanimous and generous and what an, just an amazing human he was, I thought I, I want everyone to be as impacted as I am by this. And I know, you know, Roberto Jr. and Luis Roberto have been working for the last 50 years to make sure that the the story continues to be told and the legacy continues to be told. Um, so I just viewed it as a get, hope, hopefully giving them another means to continue the work they're doing. Talk about how important it was to you to, to, con, to uh, texturize Roberto as a human being. Yeah, I mean, I think, all of us, you know, Luis and Roberto and I, um, I don't think anyone was interested in making hagiography or, uh, you know, trying to say that he was somehow not a person. I think and I think honestly, I why I find his his story and his life so, so much more inspiring is that he was a person and he had flaws and he wasn't perfect. Um, and I think, you know, though, through Luis and, and Roberto and other people who who knew him. I think, um, you know, they were all very, very much on the same page that like, I think that's why that we can aspire to the same things he did, because he was just a person. And yet, somehow he he transcended, transcended those things. Um, so yeah, I think from from the outset, I you know, and I, I was very appreciative that uh, Roberto and, and uh, Luis Roberto, 
that they didn't push me to say, hey, like, you know, we can't include the Bob Gibson story. Um, in fact, Roberto, you volunteered that to me. I, I was just, we were talking, you know, we were talking in the interview and you said, do you want some dirt on dad? And I was like, oh, sure. <laughs> and then you told the story. And I mean, me. so I was grateful to you all that you were willing to share, you know, your dad's human side as well as his like, you know, transcendent side. I I, th I I thought it was very important to, you know, include, I mean, he was, I mean, he was a human being, right? And and it, we needed to show uh, a well-rounded person who he was, but also what his flaws. To, and what he did to Bob Gibson. Oh, you know, well, yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that, it, it's funny. I mean, it, the thing is, like, that's how good he was. I, that's how hard it is to be able to say, I'm going to hit the ball straight back at him, you know, making sure that I, the next at bat, I'm going to do that and do it. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah, he did it and broke his leg. <laughs> yeah, broke his leg. Yeah, he, he was out for the season yeah. after that. He, but he, how tough Bob was, he pitched to another batter, another hitter after that. And then he had to get, they had to take him out because he, he the, 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 the football broke, was broken. You know, there was. Back, uh... He came back in, in, later in the season, which is crazy. Yeah. That, uh, I think I believe it was Manny, Manny Zangian, who told us that uh, one day he walks into like in the clubhouse, goes to the bathroom, and he sees Dad's uh, actually in his underwear in front of the mirror. Pagan, and, Jose, it was, it was Pagan. It was Pagan, Pagan. So, so he he that is looking himself in the mirror, and all of a sudden he jumps back and and opens his mouth like that, you know, and he's like, "Roberto, are you okay?" He says, "Oh yeah, today we face Gibby." And the first piece is always right here. So he was, you know, he was always prepared for him. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, that story. He he did actually uh Bob Gibson heard that story from Joe Torre. I shared that with Joe and and he goes, Can I shit, can I tell that story? I say, Yeah, Bob, go ahead. He loved that story to tell about that. So it was pretty funny. Uh Roberto doesn't have the most World Series rings in the family, does he? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it's yeah. quite a story. I, I can't wait to tell my story about that for sure. But yeah, that, that's very true. I, I was able to go to three, uh, actually four World Series and be able to win three of those. So absolutely. Yeah. As a broadcaster. I brought, yes. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, you. everyone. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye.